Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I'm going to treat this video sort of like um, an XRP community spotlight, let's say. Just to kind of highlight a Ben Sherafian who uh, he, he, he wrote something after creating something. He wrote uh, a piece called Writing a Web Monetized Game on Coil. And so Ben Sherafian, he is the co-founder and CTO of Coil, which is funded through Ripple's Spring Initiative. And so I've got a piece from him. I want to tell you at the outset here, I am, am going to treat my coverage of this a little bit differently than I, I, I typically um, would, would uh, conduct myself in a video. I'm probably mostly just going to read through this with you. Um, I'm going to try this from time to time. I did a video yesterday and it seemed well received where, um, I think it was yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, I, I read through um, a new XRP blogger's uh, piece and uh, it seemed like people enjoyed it. It seemed to get really positive feedback. So I think from time to time, maybe I won't do it literally every day, but um, I, you know, I, I just, given that um, I, I've got a, a microphone here and some people are listening, if I can kind of highlight what some other people are doing, let's do it. Now, um, that said, I understand that uh, this guy in particular, he is not your average XRP community member. Again, co-founder and CTO of Coil, I got it. That said, I want to share the piece that he wrote here. And then I'll wrap up the video by sharing an AMB crypto piece titled U.S. Crypto Regulations Have Become More Aggressive and Lack Clarity Claims Shapeshift's uh, Chief Legal Officer. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know this is going to be probably a little bit more reading and less commentary from Moon Lambo uh, than is normal. But anytime I do that, I'm going to try and give you the courtesy heads up just so you know, because if you're not into just being read to, I, it's, it's fine. Um, I'm just trying this again for a second time ever since it did go well last time. But you can let me know if you hate this and that's fine. I do listen to you and I really value your feedback. So if I go too far off the beaten path, please let me know. I, I, I don't want to bore you guys or anything like that. So anyway, here's the piece again. It's titled, Writing a Web Monetized Game. <clears throat> web games are among the best ways to waste time on the internet. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. They let you transmit a cool experience to someone without any download required. Some games are action-packed, some are meditative, and they're almost all addictive. Pictured above is my game, Goblin Farmer which is none of these, <laughs> but it's okay because anybody reading this will have the tools to make something better. Note, all the techniques outlined here act on the, the client side. That means a clever user could mess with their browser to pretend that they're monetized. It's usually fine for games. Just keep in mind that it's possible. Right. Over the years, Web games have given way somewhat to mobile games. Mobile phones are ubiquitous these days, and games are a great way to kill a few minutes when you're on the go. But there's more to it than just that. Mobile apps also have a built-in way to monetize. You can unlock premium in-game items in just a couple of taps, which has led, to, led the mobile gaming space to be massively successful financially. The web hasn't really had a way to monetize aside from advertising, but web monetization changes that equation. By accepting micropayments from web monetized users, the web gaming market could catch up to mobile gaming. And this is fascinating to me because, of course, you know Coil, that's a blend of ILP and XRP. This is Moon Lumber talking now. But let me get back to the piece now. Okay. How can I get started? Okay, I've talked a, uh, I talked a lot of talk, so now I'll show you how you can make a web monetized game. The first step is to embed your payment pointer in the top of your file. This is all you need to start making money off of your game. And he's got the little piece of code right here. I'll just pretend I know what that means. <laughs> uh, just including a meta tag doesn't give anything special to the players who are supporting you, which isn't very nice. So let's throw in some extra features for them. In my game, Goblin Farmer, you get your in-game money from web monetization micropayments. You spend your in-game money to purchase units. These units make your, you, uh, you more in-game money, which lets you get more units. So it's not entirely dependent on your web monetization micropayments, but they can give you a starting boost. If you want to add a mechanic like this to your game, you can bind the monetization progress event. Here's how I do it in Goblin Farmer, and then he shares some more code right there. Um, every time a web monetization micropayment occurs, <clears throat> the page gets a monetization progress event. You can get the amount of the micropayment out of the event. Uh, it's denominated in receiver's units, typically nano USD. In my game, I just added add that straight onto the user's cash resources that they use to buy units. 
But what if you don't care how much the player is paying? Maybe you just want a rule to activate when the player is monetized, like an on-off switch. Maybe the player unlocks a new power when web monetization is active. To determine whether web monetization is on or off, you can look at its document.monetization.state. This event fires on the very first web monetization micropayment. So if you want to apply some rules depending on whether or not the user is web monetized, you could do this. And then he shares a little bit more code with you. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use the following technique to, restri to restrict your whole game to web monetized users, but beware, beware, it will turn away a lot of your, uh, your players and some might not be happy. In my game, I use React Web Monetization to show slash hide the entire game screen based on whether the user is web monetized because only web monetized users can play. You can use this pattern if you want your, your game to only be usable by web monetized users. And they share some code about how that would look. And I, I just, I, I, I gotta say real quick, I just, part of the reason I wanted to cover this, I think it's the coolest freaking thing on the planet because you're, you, you're creating fundamentally, the way in which you'd, um, you'd approach game design fundamentally would be shifted thanks to this technology. And so even if this is a very simple game that Ben put together, he did it over the course of a weekend and he knows that graphically and everything else, content-wise, hey, it is what it is. It's fine. <laughs> but it's it's kind of like, think of it kind of like a tech demo. It sort of is. I mean, it's functional. But look, it can get you, it gets you thinking about the things that might be possible big picture. And so this really is just the beginning. Anyway, it's, uh, in conclusion, if you want to write a web game and make some money off of it, I encourage you to try out web monetization. By using the straightforward JavaScript API, you can add a lot of creative features for your users. If you're interested in making a web monetized game, then I recommend you check out, uh, and there's a link there, um, there's a competition to a, a uh, link to a competition. Jesus, can I talk today? Uh, participants will get a free coil subscription. See the details on the linked site. Message me on Twitter, at Sheriffian underscore, if you have any feedback, questions, or if you have a web monetized game you want to show off. And then it's my source code. If you want to read the source code to Goblin Farmer, you can read the source code here uh, as of August 19th. He writes, I, I basically hacked it all together so the code is an absolute mess. But hopefully you can use it to get a slightly more complete picture of how the game works. So very cool stuff. And remember, uh, Coil, though, yes, you can win a Coil subscription. Cool, that is. But keep in mind, it still is only $5 a month. And I'm looking forward to the continued adoption of it because who would not want a new method of web monetization? I don't care for ads, and I hate paywalls. <laughs> All right, here's a tweet from Digital Asset Investor. I like this one. He writes, uh, after the dot-com collapse, investors realized it wasn't the dot-com but the business model that mattered. The same thing will happen in digital assets. This time, business model equals utility. And so you can see what he's saying there, of course, so there's all this hype, there's all this frenzy. I agree so much with what he's saying here. There's all this frenzy, and that's why you keep seeing these parabolic run-ups, and, and it, you know, as a result, I am happy to be throwing my money in early. But understand that ultimately, what is going to matter is whether or not cryptocurrencies are actually being used. Those cryptocurrencies that are actually adopted are the ones that will have staying power, and uh, that's why I'm happy to put my money into XRP. All right, check out this piece from AMB Crypto. U.S. crypto regulations have become more aggressive and lack of clarity, claims Shapeshift uh, Chief Legal Officer. While government organizations are yet to choose sides for drafting crypto-related regulations, crypto exchanges that predominantly serve as the front door to crypto adoption must keep up with changing requirements or risk shifting to different uh, ge geographies. On a similar note, Veronica McGregor, Shapeshift's chief legal officer, spoke about the ongoing regulatory chaos and how the Switzerland-based crypto exchange tackles the same. McGregor said in an interview, quote, it makes me sad when you think about how much money is going into that lawyer slash legal fees that could be going into innovating, developing, and creating value for people, and it's just been diverted to compliance costs. McGregor also spoke of, of Shapeshift's massive investments towards gaining regulatory clarity, with the company pioneering and delivering platforms that can provide end-to-end -end holistic crypto experience. McGregor went on to compare present-day regulations with those of 2014, stating, and I quote, 
the regulatory environment has gotten a lot more clamped down on a lot more aggressive in that last year and a half, and at the same time, that hasn't brought any clarity. She also highlighted the government's conflicting messages during the Libra hearings, claiming that the lack of clarity is driving technological innovations away from the United States. McGregor added that the SEC kick fiasco will help crypto businesses around the world to understand the United States government's stand on the ecosystem. Taking cues from the company's history and dealing with numerous cryptocurrencies, McGregor revealed that Bitcoin is still king for many in their line of business. The legal head of Shapeshift went on to warn naive users about ongoing scams, asking them to avoid unknown ads and enable phone-based two-factor authentication. So there you go. Uh, one day, one day, one day. <laughs> I don't know when, probably far from now, but there will be cryptocurrency regulation in a relatively complete state, sufficient enough that individual businesses will be happy to, uh, to to conduct a business and won't, won't be fearful that uh, they're going to get in legal trouble, trouble. You know, I remember Bob Way, former Ripple employee, he was talking about something that effective when he, when he jumped in, because he's like the 10th employee at Ripple. So this is, must have been like 2013, I'm guessing. But he, he was talking about how in early days, and he was, he was joking, but he was half joking. He's like, yeah, you know, on any given day, uh, given the nature of cryptocurrencies, we didn't know if the FBI would just be knocking down our door. <laughs> you know, because from a regulatory perspective, it's kind of like, eh, we're proceeding, but is that okay? We don't know. <laughs> so, but uh, I guess it's a good point to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching, everybody. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!